Hey guys, Rocky's here with me. First thing I want to state to you guys is I'm, I'm not hating on you or sitting in judgment on you. So what I say, I don't want you to take the wrong way. Well, why is that? It's because uh, I've got trees here. Not specks, but trees here. I'm well aware of that. And that's how someone who professes Jesus should be. Uh, that should be the first and foremost way to be. And up there at the forefront should I what should always be as well trying to be holy. And uh, if you look at, at what is being holy, well being holy is being separate and apart. Being holy is being separated from. And it's being as best you can apart from this crazy world and separating yourself from it as best you can because you uh, if you go up into the here comes the dog starting with me now hang on just a second guys because I'm not stopping this video while I have this on my brain um Being separate and apart and being able to discern truth from lies. And I bring you this video on a Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, not being in church. Uh, a lot of people that will just get in a church, even if it's bad. You just get in the church. Um, however, they fail to neglect to tell you that uh, well, they mention it here and there that there's going to be a great falling away of the church. And we're there, folks. We are there. Uh, I, for one, am not going to go um, sit up in a place uh, where there's women preachers. Oh my God. Toxic masculinity. Well, let's talk about toxic masculinity for a minute. All this toxic male being male stuff. Uh, do you realize it's approaching 50% of the boys in the world are growing up with no dad, they are just being raised by a mother. Are you aware that almost 70%, speaking in world figures, of the teachers that are teaching uh, young boys are women? So don't go there with me. That's, that's a portion of being in discernment and figuring out the truth from the false lies that you're given. See, um, I'm not going to go set up in a church where um, there's hip hop or rap or rock music. I just think it's not the place. Well, that's how we get more people in. Uh, let me tell you something. Christ is not all inclusive. Newsflash to you. I'd start reading a Bible and quit listening to what my parents told me, my preacher told me, and I'd start reading a Bible for myself. Um, I'd really get into the book of Romans. I'd get into chapter one specifically. Um, and you're going to see where 
in the Bible, God is saying, there's people that I dislike so much that I'm putting the blinders on them. I'm blinding them, God says, because I don't want to live with them up here. I don't want to live with them in heaven. So I try to reach some young people, right? If you're going to just go along with the flows of this world and have a fake false Jesus that you worship, that just you, you never change. You don't have to change anything about yourself. And I'm not talking about that you have to work your way in, that you have to go out here and do things and, and work like a job to get into heaven. It's, it's, uh, it's all received by grace. It's a free gift. Uh, but there's a change that does come along in that. And uh, can you not see that the world in which you live in, you've got grown men and women walking around claiming to be the other gender. you got people that are, I'm no gender. Or I'm fluid. One moment I'm a guy, one moment I'm a girl. Crazy, crazy stuff. And uh, the Bible talks about this. And uh, so, yeah, I do separate from it. And uh, to an extent, obviously. Uh, you know, we promote and we love boxing. Uh, we don't promote and love modern boxing. We just don't. Well, why, why wouldn't you? Because it's trash. Why would I? Why would I promote a man running around? Speak it, but <coughs> I can't even <coughs> get choked up trying to talk as fast as this idiot. Speak it, believe it, receive it. Speak it, believe it, receive it. God do anything for me. It, uh, God does this for me. I do this and they'll do this for me. I'm not working at McDonald's no more because God did this for me. Really? Looks to me like he's handed you over to Satan walking around with women's smocks on and effeminate sunglasses. See, being really truly loving Christ is not about just getting up in a ring and saying, I give the credit to Jesus, right? Now, none of us are perfect. Uh, I sure as hell am not. But I carry myself as a man, right? Uh, I'm not jumping on, on the uh, homosexual bandwagon of the day. I'm not going to do it. Why? Because, well... Go read the Bible and find out why. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, well, I'll tell you in newer versions of the Bible, especially these brand new last five to eight year versions of the Bible, no, homosexuality is fine. They interchange the word man lay, laying with man, burning in their lust for one another and woman laying in bed with a woman, burning in their lust for one another. And, and the, the, the badness of that, uh, the evilness of that, and they interchange the words with prostitute, see? And they actually go after the woman that Jesus said, I've forgiven you, now go on. Change. See, so there needs to be a fundamental change. Uh, that's not an outward work. That's an inward work. So you should think about that. You walk around here uh, acting like a hoodlum or acting like uh, uh Every two words that comes out of your mouth is F this, F that. I'm guilty of that myself. 
just to let you people know. Uh, I don't want to be a hypocrite about anything. I'm not perfect, and I try to catch myself. But I'm finding the older I get, what I've been told was really bad and evil is really good. Uh, let me give you an example. A uh, bunch of homosexuals come up on me, and especially if they make a pass at me or something like that. Same for my son. Uh, he's done this before. I've done this before. We'll be like, you better get the hell on up out of here. There's no, not no kind and gentle fixing to go on between you guys and, and me. The reason why Joe's not in public school. It's the reason why Joe's not in a private school. I yanked Joe out of military school. Uh, was it three years ago, Joe? Three years ago. Or four. Joe was excelling like crazy and ranking like crazy in military school. They come out marching and acting like a bunch of uh, uh, queers, effeminate queers, in a school march to a Michael Jackson song, one of his more feminine songs. And I said, we're done, that's it. We're done. And before the march, when they were practicing for it, Joe was, now Joe was younger, you know, Joe's just 14, so he was around 10 at the time. May might have even been nine. And he was trying to explain to me, hey, Dad, I don't want to get in this march. I don't want to get in this march. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. And uh, uh, somehow, Joe and my wife, his mother, uh, another thing bad with the world, uh, I shouldn't have to explain that his mother is my wife. Uh, but I feel I've got to, and in this world today, you about do. Uh, so he and his mother worked it out, and they were like, and, and worked it with the military school that he wouldn't be in. And uh, come to find out, we I got to watch the thing on video, and uh, I was, no, no, no. You're not going down there no more. And I yanked him out of it. And he's been homeschooling from an, a Christian academy in Florida. And even at that, I'm sitting here, here and there, not much to the credit of the academy. But I'm sitting here and I'm having to correct some things that they are teaching him. And you want to know why? That's my job. See? You, you want to know why that is? It's because God gave that job to, to daddies to do that. It's not, not a mama's responsibility. That's why there's a failure in society right now. It's a dad's responsibility. And dads have, have had big holes put in their hearts where they're not able to be dads. And this is the main focal in the, to the heart of absent dads. Why would they? Uh, to be honest with you, with all this feminism, feminist, uh, uh, feminism, toxic fe feminism, uh, why, why, would, why would not that drive men out and away from the home? If you, if you can't father your children, what use are you? Well, I'll tell you, according to a court system, according to any government, if you're a daddy, you're a billfold. You're a wallet. You're just a cash provider, right? For a Jezebel woman who is raising effeminate children. See? Now, God also said when people would stand up and tell the truth, uh, 
especially biblical truth, and here's the order in that. And whether you believe in God or not, let me tell you, even people that were atheists held this order up until about 2010. And that was there's something up here uh, in those that believe in God that the, the something is God. Jesus, Daddy, Mama, and Children. And it's in that order. It's never equal to mom and the dad. They can sit and make some equal decisions and things and talk things out. But you can't be a Christian and profess love for Christ. Christ is going to say he never knew you, daddy. If you're sitting inside a house where you are not manning up. Uh, and more often than not, I'm tired of hearing the men aren't doing their jobs. Uh, because they've legally uh, had the right to do their job stripped from them, see? And it's all a major design. And the hell you see going on should help you realize the belief in Christ because it's the only book that spells out exactly what would happen. And we're at the first time that history is not repeating itself. We got 5,000 recorded years that we know of. I'm sure there's more than that recorded. Uh, but we got 5,000 recorded years of history where things have been pretty much the same way up until the past decade where you've got a six foot four burly tattooed guy walking in the store. Let me get a pack of cigarettes. And the store clerk going, Thank you, sir. Here you go. Thank you, sir. Don't call me, sir. Crazy. See, all that's here now. Yeah, the times that, that everybody was like, that used that, oh, well, that'll never happen. That'll never happen. We're there now. It has happened. It did happen. It is happening. So, I'm not condemning any of you that don't believe in God. But keep your mind open. And uh, if you can't look and see any good, and maybe good offends you at this point in your life, uh, maybe you think, well, that's judgmental. This is judgmental. Are you aware that in gay pride parades all across the world, uh, the news is trying to tell you they always said this, but they didn't. Uh, for the first time, they're openly admitting that they're coming for your children, right? Well, I'm a fighter. They're not coming for my kids. They may get your kids. You may be so loving that you'll just give your kids to them as a Christian because you don't have the real Christ. You got a false satanic type of love, see, you can't wrap your head around God's love. God loved the world so much that he flooded it and killed everything and everybody except certain groups of animals. And they didn't all go on there two by two. A lot of them went seven by seven. You just need to wake up and start reading the Bible. You start learning about the flood and looking at the science with it. And one can piece together more like a puzzle that the flood did happen. And all these occurrences, such as the Grand Canyon that they say took millions of years to develop, were developed quickly in a flood. See, uh, a whole host of other things. Astronomers now are coming out left and right, with the exclusion of the science guy you see on TV, who's not an astronomer. And that Neil deGrasse God-hater uh, who sets and admits to you that all their theory, Big Bang, is not uh, no way mathematically possible because the universe is still expanding. Uh, and who, who, who told us uh, uh, 4,000 years ago that the Earth, that the, that the solar system was expanding and wasn't going to, Stop at the expanse, the expanding, the the Bible. So, 
same people that told us we, we come from monkeys and started putting chimpanzee parts together uh, to make a fictitious female god uh, that they worship. That's where worship the beast is coming in. It's evolution. It's not a big beast. It's evolution. You're worshiping that we come from monkeys instead of worshiping. We used to worship that we come from God. Now we're worshiping that we come from uh, bacteria, animalistic stuff. And uh, that's the beast that's referring to. So we've just been so narrowed. But I want to try to tell you I'm not perfect. And I'll admit it. And when somebody comes up on me with the garbage, if I'm sitting in a church and a woman gets up to preach, I'm standing up and I'm going to say, this is wrong. Well, why is it wrong? Well, you follow the world and what you think's right. And I'm going to follow what I damn well know is right. See, I'll take 5,000 years of doing something over the decay of the past 10 years, uh, it's not a hard decision to make. You know, it's really not. I'll take the decency. Uh, there's always been women that dress slutty and had their ass hanging out of their clothes and things like that. Tits showing, all sorts of, not like today. Not like today. We've never had a moment in time where men were walking around showing their damn underwear. We just haven't up till recent in history. We've never had a moment in time other than before they really could make shoes and, uh, the, and in biblical times and before in uh, Phoenician times, uh, a lot of times they had shoes on. Uh, but they were very expensive and they had no socks in the hotter climate. So therefore, to keep from having, you know, feet smell, they sweat in a certain way and make a very bad smell. But rich people had some type of uh, clothing to go over their feet and wore shoes because it protected their feet better. So... Um, we've never come up in a, and nowhere in modern times where a damn grown man in a, a industrialized society is going to walk around outside in public or a, at athletic places with slippers on. Right? See, we're not perfect. So Joe knows when he sees a damn guy coming in even if he's a head cracker, Joe's going to bust him the hell up. And that's what he does. See, I'm not telling you what the plan is to do. He sees a guy come walking up with damn slippers on. He'll go right over to that guy. Let's spar. Get you some shoes on. Put something on your feet. That's the guy who he wants to go after. You want to know why? Not all of them. Not all of them, and I'm not chastising uh, people who do that. But what I am saying is uh, I'm chastising us as a human race that we've allowed ourselves to think it's prop, uh, uh, better and more comfortable to look like a damn fool in public. You know, back in, in my day and for thousands of years before that, those were called night slippers. Anywhere in Europe or North America or uh, even Eastern societies where it was cold, you had night slippers. I see uh, women going out with their damn pajamas on in public. I see kids with hair all over the damn place. And I'm like, what the hell? And see, that's because of the effeminization of society. Right? Uh, I seen most of my friends 
wishing mothers who have husbands a happy Father's Day. I'm like, where in the hell? And thing is, I've probably done that too in the past. And I'm not filing for the mess no more. You can pedal that shit somewhere else. You're not pedaling it with me. Right? It's just not going to happen. And I'm willing to fight over it, see? I'm not perfect. So we're different. We're set apart. We train different. The mentality, the thinking is different. We school different. Uh, we're not doing a damn thing. And when we catch something that's normal, and Joe's just, he's just a 14-year-old boy. He'll come up to me and say, Dad, everybody else is doing this. Come up with something different. I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. And that's why when he goes into a gym, all hell of fear pops up on big men, small men, teenagers, 30-somethings, 20-somethings, 40-somethings. Everybody. Because say we're not doing the same thing everybody else is doing. It ain't that nobody's any better than anybody else. Joe can get a licking. He's took many a lickings. Many of them. And dad out there, maybe you should have put your your boy in the ring to get lickings. See? Maybe you should have done that. So, we're different. In this house, we are not perfect. But we are not conforming to what's going on out here. And when I point, I am not pointing at you. I am not sitting in condemnation of you. If anything I've said has offended you, go check it out. Maybe it will end up helping you. Uh the good, friendly, easy, wonderful, loving advice is generally worth nothing because it's easy. We are not conforming to the world up in my house. Not happy. Not happy. I rule what goes on up in here. And until the good Lord takes me off, that's the way it's going to continue to be. If I'm bedridden, my wife will let me be the guy that puts his foot down. As long as I can talk, write something down, uh, get it communicated in some way. Uh, because she's always struggling to be a good wife. Most of you would think, well, that's awful. That's so terrible. And you know what? Most of you, without knowing it, are thinking that of Jesus Christ. And you have no idea and you have no clue as to what you think. We are not perfect up in this house. But we are different. We are peculiar. We are trying to be holy, different, set aside. We want to look weird to you. We don't care what your values or your opinions are to the extent that you point at us. And I'm not really pointing at you. I feel bad for you. I feel sorry for you if you fall into the categories that I mentioned. And most of you walking around with the slippers and the, uh, six inches of underwear showing, going outside with no shirt on, uh, out here uh, running around with your titties hanging out, you your blouse, no bra, no modesty about you whatsoever, male and female. Uh, uh, you do what you choose and what you like to do, but we're going to do what we choose and what we like to do. And it's just as simple as that. And it should sound bad to you, and it, it is going to sound bad to you. I'm a big, bad bigot, right? But you got a fake and phony Christ. So you're supposed to think that. They've got you fooled. Right? They got you fooled. You may be the guy that's wandering around looking for evidence for there not to be a God. I walk around looking for, I don't need to look for evidence, number one. 
But when I'm looking in science, I'm looking and varying over. I'll go look over at the evidence of Snow Guy, and then I'll go right over here to this and prove this bullshit over here wrong. And I'll do it every single time. I'll do it every single time. And I'm not saying you should have to believe in the real Jesus Christ. You've got the freedom to believe anything you so choose. The only thing I am telling you is you won't be peddling your bullshit on me. Because I'm sick of hearing decent people getting shut out, getting pushed away, getting called the bad people uh, when they are striving to do good things. I'm not going to adhere to it. Sick of it. It's you that's the bad one. It's you that needs to be shut out. How about that? But I'm not going to shut you out until you start forcing it on me or my family. So that's how we walk here. Um, we like all things that are of old. We like all things that are more holy than today. Uh, we're not perfect in this house. And we're, we will not judge you for not being perfect. We will not judge you in one aspect whatsoever. But one thing we will not allow is for you to set and reverse the judgment on us while you, you're claiming... You're trying to use uh, love in the true Christ against the true Christians. And most everybody does that. I hear, you're judging me. God said, Christ said, don't judge. Where did he say that at? Right? He's telling holy, separate and apart people not to cast stones at one another. And then he's saying, get the hell away from everybody else. Both those groups keep enough peace and not casting stones at one another. But we're supposed to be judgmental in every aspect of life. That those, The Bible is the biggest book that's been took out of context, something pulled out, and it's always used for trashy reasons. Isn't it amazing that it's not, nothing's really ever pulled out of context Uh that makes this world and, and spins with it on this big insane asylum ball we live on. The good things don't get to go around unless they're for bad things. Yeah, just do anything you want. As long as you say you love Jesus, you're square. You win. I look a little bit harder at that, folks. Uh, Jesus himself said, narrow is the path that comes to me. And wide is the path that those are going to be worshiping and uh, calling my name that's going to go through that ain't going to get in. There's going to be way more. Christ is going to be looking at, at the Father saying, I don't know who this person is. Never knew him. And you might be one of the ones that's mentioned in Romans chapter 1 that God has blindfolded you. God has blinded you. So you be careful what you pull up out of the Bible. You be careful all this love and acceptance of everything. Uh, Jesus said, I didn't come to break the old Levitical law. It's supposed to keep going as far as like the penalties for going and murdering or and things all those things uh, he said I've come to fulfill it because uh, if, if I didn't nobody would get into heaven and that's true too but that doesn't mean that reprobates will get into heaven go look in Romans look up who's reprobate Reprobates won't be getting into nothing except hell with Satan. And nobody's looking at that anymore. Go up into the church and you got effeminate queers up there. 
I too possess the rest of us time and we love Jesus. Uh, you better run. Because it's mentioned throughout the Bible. Effeminate men are not real. It's bad. It's evil. You go up into a church. Uh, nobody says anybody should have to dress up. That's crazy. The dressing up part became kind of ritualistic because people loved God enough to where they'd put on their best clothes to go into the, to a house of worship to worship him. And of course, there's a lot of bad to that. People envying other people's clothes. People, I got the best clothes and things like that. And, uh, but you know what? You see God haters sitting over here. You've got dressed up too. Uh, a time or two in your life and been like that. I'm going to have the best clothes at the ball or over here at the concert. So don't even go there. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. You just use things to your advantage to hate God. And it's probably because God has blinded you. And maybe he's blinded your generations. You ever think about that? There's a lot of generational curses. There's truth to that. You ever notice how things will go? They'll go exactly so many generations, just as the Bible says. And you can probably look back. I don't know for sure. I haven't researched people's lives, but you can probably go back, look, and say, well, they did this, and it cursed five generations or four generations now. Amazing how this one down here just shot up. Great life. So be careful what you do. Be careful. You can be forgiven. Curses can be broken. But you'll never understand the grace of Jesus Christ, and I won't either. You'll never understand the love of Jesus Christ, and I won't either. And I remind you all again, all the animals, all the people, all the everything, except a precious, precious few, even lived. Just think about that. Well, I don't believe that part. Well, God says if you don't believe a part, one part of it, you don't believe none of it in his eyes. So you really think you're getting up there again? People are so confused and so mixed up in this world that it's, it's funny. The greatest people are always the ones that didn't accept Christ too. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Isn't it amazing that a so-called Christian nation ran to a boxer that didn't even believe in Jesus Christ? The greatest one. Isn't that amazing? You think maybe a liberal line ungodly press help the one that didn't believe in Jesus out, that never professed Jesus? I think so. Look around today at what they profess. Look around today who they're glorifying. See, so it's everywhere. It's in every sport. It's in every, uh, every academic discipline. Uh, throughout government, it's everywhere. So get your ass separated from it. Right? Just get separated from it. As for us, we're, we're going to separate in, in the way we feel and the way we project it out. And I will not hold back on anybody's ass. Refuse to do it. I'd rather be blind with no glasses and ragged with no clothes. Uh then make $20 million and sit around and be a fat cat and then die and go to hell. And of course, you that don't understand that, you don't realize no preciousness or nothing. You're so ignorant. You'd sell, uh, you're the guy that would eat the last Big Mac. Uh, being told you were going to have a heart attack tomorrow, you'd, you'd deny it and eat the Big Mac and have the heart attack tomorrow. So, Get out of that mentality. Family life, family structure, all to hell. No daddies, no tough boys no more. There are exceptions, yes, but on the whole. When I was young, we were fighting in these streets and at the playgrounds. 
When my dad was young, they were fighting in those streets and the schoolyards. When his dad was young, they were fighting in the dirt roads and on the farms. And on and on and on and on. It's these gen this generation. Right? Joe labels himself the bully killer. He can't stand bullies. He bullies bullies. But see, sometimes bullies are necessary. You can't reason with some people. Some people have to have it knocked into them. And that's what's wrong with this world today. You look around you. All the hell, all the evil. Well, you can't stand up and do it. He was mentally ill when he killed uh, his two infant twin babies. We can't give him the death penalty. And we wonder why the shit and, and things like that are increasing when we're not giving God's penalties out like God told us to do. You ain't seen nothing yet, folks. Your ass better separate from it or you're going to be a victim of it. You're going to be a victim of it on this earth and you're going to have an eternity of victimhood after you think you're a victim now? You have no idea what being a damn victim is. The only person responsible for you is you. <clears throat> you robbed that liquor store. You beat the shit out of that woman over there. You struck that man over there. You purse snatched or wallet snatched these folks over here. That was you that did that. See, it's, it's not uh, mama's fault that she didn't discipline you. It's not daddy's fault because he hit you too hard with the bell the time or two or beat the living shit out of you when you needed it. It's your fault, see. Sick of hearing it. All of you have excuses for everything bad and not not and then pull down everything good. So no, we're not joining the bandwagon. We're not doing it. That's one wagon we're off of and we intend to stay off of it. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. You can do anything in this world you want to with the one true Christ. You bet like everybody else that's professing a Christ, but not the one true one. You're going to get your ass in so many hookups and confusion and chaos that you're just going to throw your hands up, be blinded, and be one of the ones that stand over there. Don't tell him he's doing wrong uh, by having sex with another man. Don't tell him. You can't. Uh, he killed all these people because his mommy and daddy wasn't treating him right. Really? Are you aware that there was a thing called World War II? Are you aware that uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands, millions of little children saw bullets put in the back of mommy and daddy's heads and yet went on to live good, productive, good, moral, ethical lives? And you want to sit there and say it's because his dad hollered at him or his mama didn't discipline him? Yeah, there's way more reasons than that. It may start there, but that's not an excuse for it. You need to get your ass up. You need to be looking in a mirror, and you need to be examining who you're looking at. That's what you need to do. I do it every day, trust me. And that's why every time I'm standing in front of somebody, boy, you're looking for perfect and greatness. Don't look here. You're looking for somebody trying to be holy and separated from you dumbasses. Yeah, that'd be me. That'd be me. So that's my message. I don't really care who likes it, who don't. Uh, I'm old school, as they call the verbiage now, uh, or now, whatever you want to, nounage. Uh, I'm old school every single time. I do not like the ways of this world now. Uh, I, you look and you say something, 
Well, that's sweet that they did that. I grew up in a world where people did that all the time. It's not the exception to the rule to me. I'm looking at the thousand people that will slam the door in the old lady's face. I'm not looking at the one that holds the damn door open for her. I'm looking at the 9,999 that slam it in her face. And it pisses me off and it makes me angry. That's who I am. See? But you got to look on the bright side. You know? Take that shit somewhere else and go live what you think. So, uh, cope with it however you think you need to cope with it. Yours will be coming. Yours will be coming. I'm coping with it by hating it like the Bible told me I would hate it. And uh, uh, getting righteously angry about it and all those things. And I'll continue to do so. Right? A lot of damn people out here on drugs and drinking it to hell on up, and pilling it to hell on up, or snorting it up or shooting it up. That are good, great people. Great people. They can't handle this shit. See? They can't handle it. So, and the sad thing is, you saying that would sit there and jump on me or jump on all of, on all of them. But I'll remind you, Jesus didn't come for you that accepts this world. He came for them that, that can't accept it and that it makes them sick. Those are the sick he came for. So be careful with it. That's my little spiel for today. Um, I know one thing, it's selfishly now. It sure helps me to say all this because it helps me then. And I know it's the truth. And uh, it helps me that maybe one person will see this and they say, hey, I, I think like that too. See, because you're not alone. You're not alone. The first man that stands up and there's 10,000 around him sitting and the one stands up to point and say no, uh, there's a thousand others that are going to stand up right behind him, see. So be the one that stands up. We ain't alone. We that hate this world are not alone. We are not alone. Uh, we're just having difficulty in the chaos and confusion of those that are accepting this world and tolerant to all the evil in it and want to be nice to all the evil in it. Uh, uh, through all that confusion and chaos and false love and false Christ, we're having trouble coming together and uh, being able to communicate. And that's what's going on. Most people are scared to stand up. Well, let me tell you, I ain't. I care less whether you agree with me or not. And I may not agree with you, but I'm not going to single you out and then be ugly to you Uh uh, or anything like that unless it's in my circle and you were pushing and pressing it within my circle, see. Um, so to all the people that hate what I said, I hope to God you're not at the end of this video here. I hope you clicked off at the beginning because uh, none of this was for you and Personally, I'm trying to separate from you, and uh, it's what we do here. It's how I raise my son, uh, and that's the way we're going to continue to be. And you always remember, it's like Joe told me, even, even the bully beater, the guy that beats on the bullies has to bully the bully. So remember that. And reasoning with these people. And they're all bullies. All this pride shit. They're all bullies. They're trying to bully the, the majority of the people into their thing. Along with corporate aspects and all sorts of satanic money and worldly establishment. Uh, and it's going to take a bully to bring them down. And uh, right now we're just separating from it as best we can. Joe sees it and he bullies it out. So, 
got to get the family order back. If the family order is not brought back, there's no hope. There's no hope. The only family order is Christ, Daddy, Mama, and then the children. In that order. It can't be Christ, Mama, Daddy, or Christ is not there. It can't be Christ, children, Daddy, Mama. There's no other order that will work. So remember that, guys.